Welcome to Global Village. We are very honored today uh, to have a, our Honorable Bob Warner. Warner, he is the uh, Speaker of the House for the Alberta Legislature. Welcome, Bob, to the program. Thank you for having me. Could you, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, a uh, little bit about myself. Um, your identity for me always comes from family and community, etc. I've uh, had the privilege and honor of living um, in Alberta for um, almost all of a life. Originally from, uh, as is the a lot of people around this area, uh, originally a farm kid from uh, southeast Saskatchewan. Uh, worked as a social worker. Uh, my wife and I moved uh, to Grand Prairie, Alberta. Worked for the province of Alberta many, many years ago. Wow. And then came to Medicine Hat and I was director of, uh, of uh, community and family services here. And I went through a number of promotions uh, that ended up in executive for city with uh, with our city government. I retired. We have four daughters, uh, four sons-in-law, and eleven grandchildren, and they're the reason that I do uh, all that I do. Wow! And I uh, uh, understand from your uh, profile, I think, uh, was your grandkid who uh, uh, yeah. asked you to run? Uh, yes, as. Uh, <clears throat> My running um, and being uh, what I'm doing now was, um, as I affectionately say, it wasn't in the initial retirement plan. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I was I was approached uh, already into the election, um, and uh, the premier, uh, the current premier, asked if I would consider. And um, uh, I was uh, really uncertain because it was a new stage in in my life, or a different stage yeah, in my yeah, life, and. Yeah. Um, so I was on my way to say, uh, I don't think I should do this. And my eldest, our eldest granddaughter, who yeah. was uh, 15 at the time, um, said, Papa, uh, you must run. Uh, Alberta needs to change. And uh, ah. that uh, wasn't much what she said, but the passion and tone that she said it in. And wow. uh, that sort of eventually uh, uh, convinced, convinced me that I had some duty and responsibility to, to, to do what I'm now doing. Well, so that was your first time to run for public office then? No, I had actually, um, I had actually run um, uh, in 1993. Uh, I was a much younger and not nearly as wise as, <laughs> uh, and, and smart because uh, every day that I get older, I learn yeah. how little I really know. Yeah. So I actually ran <coughs> in, in that election and uh, was a privilege and honor then as well, mm -hmm. um, but uh, was unsuccessful and, and really had... Uh, I'd really backed away from active uh, 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 involvement in party politics. Uh, I had a sense of responsibility to the city government to uh, be not as uh, high a profile as I might have been, and so uh, um, uh, that was. Um, so it's not. It wasn't my first. Uh, First rodeo, as they oh, say. Oh, okay, I see. So you run before you you yeah. were not succeed, you yeah. did not succeed that one, and then uh, right you left that. This was the second time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was the second time. I had been behind the scenes, particularly as I retired. I became a little more active again than I had been. But so long as I was working at city government, uh, I felt ethically that I needed to uh, play a much lower profile, and um, uh, so uh, here we are. There you go. Uh, actually, uh, the. Uh, the current MB, uh, who happened to be a police officer, I think. Glenn Knotts. Uh, yeah, we um, invite him uh, here. He was sitting here. Very nice guy. Yeah. Um, a very straight shooter, and uh, we had opportunity to invite him to Global Village, and he's still on the program. And um, so one day I was driving in Medicine Hat, actually. I came with my wife, and I saw his picture. I'm thinking, wow. What where was that picture? So I stopped and they look at, and he was running for um, uh, the um, MP. So I asked Martin Shields, and I said, "Wow," he said, "Yeah, he won." I said, "Wow, congratulations to him." I actually knew uh, Glenn Matz, uh, and when I was with city government, I had been seconded for two years uh, down to the Medicine Hat Police Service. They were building, uh, adding on to a new s yeah. station, and mm -hmm. there was a lot of recruitment uh, going on. Okay. And uh, Glenn Motz was a constable, and um, um, I consider Glenn a friend. There are a few political issues that he and I don't always agree on, there but uh, uh, very dedicated uh, individual that served his uh, community uh, for a long time in a very productive and constructive way. So I consider uh, to call him a friend. No, that's, that's good. So we wish him good luck. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the um, 
role of the House Speaker and the process want to become a House Speaker? Yes, um, well, affectionately, again, when my daughters and their mother were de giving me advice as to whether or not to run, etc., they yeah. determined that maybe the uh, uh, worst uh, case scenario was is that I might win. Well, um, <laughs> so you have to run for the House uh, Speaker then? Yeah, you, oh. you, no, I, when I first got elected, yeah. uh, and uh, tradition in uh, most of the Commonwealth, but certainly in Canada and most certainly in Alberta, so the governing party, uh, along with the opposition, will usually nominate a person. Okay. But the speaker's uh, role is to represent the entire 87 members of the Alberta legislature. Mm -hmm. So it's my job to manage the process while we, uh, we are in the chamber, uh, while debate is taking place, uh, as well as a number of functions. So I was elected, I think it was about... about three weeks after the election, the first uh, day of the assembly, the very first thing that needs to happen is the election of a speaker, uh, as well as the election of a deputy speaker and a deputy of chairs. So there are two deputies uh, who are in the speaker's office. In, a, in addition to that uh, administration of, of, the, of the House, uh, you also provide uh, the, we have about Four, 450 employees in the Legislative Assembly office, administratively headed up by the clerk who's accountable to the, to the speaker. And so these would be the Hansard staff, uh, the legal counsel for legislative uh, security, the visiting services, um, uh, the uh, the communications for the legislature. Uh, there's a a, wow. a, li a library research center for for MLAs. So those are a, the that's the other side of of the job. The administrative, uh, uh, roughly the equivalent of a minister. Yeah. But yeah. Um, uh, those aspects are covered under the umbrella of the of the speakers wow and so i was a i was nominated by the government uh, as the nominee and there were uh, uh, there was another nominee from the opposition and uh, <clears throat> so i was elected by the 87 uh, members oh that's very good so it's not only your job uh, as the speaker but also all these other departments come under the umbrella of the speaker yes Wow, so that's like similar to a minister then? Or minister Very then. similar to, to a minister. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, all of our activities, though, are supporting all, all members of the legislature and uh, not uh, necessarily the, the, uh, the government's agenda. Okay, wow. Uh, you donated 15 years uh, of your time to a Canadian reaching out to the World's Children Foundation that's called CARO, uh, which is located as a foundation in, um, in Medicine Hat. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the foundation? Well, yes, I, I'd always had an interest and a sense of responsibility, um, I guess, to tell you, Ahmed, you don't. We're very fortunate as a country to yeah. to enjoy the freedoms, yeah. the opportunities, the, the the safety, all of those issues. So I always had a sense of that we were very fortunate as Canadians, and that we had a responsibility to 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 help share, assist, create relationships with other parts of the world. So. Um, I'd always had that, but I, uh, my daughter, who um, um, is a psychologist, uh, and um, she, uh, long, complicated story, but, but she uh, worked with families out of the, uh, in, in Edmonton, and um, um, we, and she wanted to, one of those, these families had adopted a, a child out of Romania, mm -hmm. and um, um, uh, she had got to know the family very well, and she wanted to go over and do some, some work with kids and families in, in Romania. And uh, she asked uh, me if I would go with her. And uh, uh, so I went there uh, about 15 or 16 years ago. Uh, we came back and we started the, the, um, the formation of Carol. Uh, several uh, of associates that I had, uh, uh, I um, uh, pulled in and we, 
in, and they are in fact very very uh, much a part of creating it and uh, I think right now I had to step back when I was speaker because yeah, yeah. of uh, ethical requirements yeah. Yeah. and um, we're uh, we continue to fund Caro continues to fund programs in Eastern Europe in Romania. Yeah. Uh, the major investment, though, is a uh, children's found uh, uh, orphanage in Burkina Faso in West yeah. Africa near yeah. uh, uh, Yako uh, mm -hmm. in, in in West Africa. And I had the privilege of going there in 2008 as well. Um, uh, so uh, I uh, I was. I've been with it. There are some very great people uh, working and carrying on uh, after I withdrew, and uh, uh, I hope they continue for a long, long time. So the foundation is still uh, still very active. Uh, uh, I think it will have its roots are now uh, deeper, and yep, uh, uh, we're very small, uh, entirely volunteer. Yep. Um, and uh, so there are no administrative overheads. It's passion and commitment yeah. of the heart that those yeah. volunteers do what they do. Uh, what do you think are the, what are the importance of the Excel pipeline of Alberta to the, uh, for Albertans and Canadians in terms of economic growth? Well, uh, I'm as, I think I'm like many and most of Albertans and Medicine Hatters uh, that um, we recognize that, that um, you know, as a responsibility to future generations and health and all of those matters, that we need to be looking at uh, newer, more improved, cleaner, healthier ways of generating energy. I also know, however, that um, uh, we've been fortunate uh, to have been blessed with uh, natural resources such as oil and gas, and uh, that has been one of the major, if not the singular, it's certainly the one of the major uh, economic drivers in, in this part of Canada and yeah. in Alberta, yeah. uh, and our, our own city is called the Gas City. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, it seems to me that uh, we have, we need to be continuing uh, to, to uh, stay, sustain that industry and continuing in parallel uh, to, to develop renewable resources, which I think is huge opportunities for southeastern Alberta and the renewables as well. In the meantime, though, we need to get uh, the pipelines to get our products mm -hmm. um, to ports. Yep. And uh, certainly, I think I speak for all members of the legislature. There was a sense of optimism when uh, the uh, federal uh, government announced that there are the possibilities of two pipelines. In and um, uh, I think that uh, uh, we're beginning to see already that, that uh, the, the, the climate is changing and that we are starting to see um, uh, the possibilities of those pipelines being constructed hopefully soon. So the, the, the two pipelines you, re, you refer yeah, to? One is to the east and one is to, the, uh, to Vancouver through the, uh, uh, through the mountains, which is a, a parallel to an existing pipeline that exists. And the government has been, uh, uh, been uh, uh, working, probably the singular highest issue was uh, on the environmental front yeah. and on the pipeline front. So would then Excel pipeline will be the third one then, top of that? Well, line? there's also another third one which has in Canada, which has not received approval yet. So there was an eastern one and, and the one uh, Kinder Morgan to the south. Mm -hmm. And Excel was the Trump pipe, uh, pipeline. Um, so, so there are actually three potential pipelines. And wow. as we know, there's a lot of... Um, uh, steps yet to take yeah, before yeah. those pipelines go. They're not a done deal yet, yeah, but, yeah. They, uh, but they uh, are at least got over the ma first major hurdle. Yeah, I, I believe, I'm not mistaken, I think Mr. Uh, Donald Trump, I think, signed or indicated to sign up the, uh, to sign the uh, Excel pipeline uh, to give the green light for the, uh, uh, mm -hmm. to move on. Uh, so we hope um, that will benefit to the, uh, Canadian is uh, uh, overall for uh, economic growth. What do you think are the advantages of a diverse communities in the 21st century economic growth? Uh, you do have also a diverse community in, in Medicine Hat. We do. You are a living go. example of yeah. the diversity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I do a lot of, particularly when I'm down here, I do 
a fair amount, not as much as I'd nearly like to with, uh, with grade six kids who are studying government, et cetera. Uh, yeah. And uh, I'm continuing to be, they ask me, they always ask me, what's the best part of your job as speaker of the legislature? And I said, talking to you, that yeah. was. But I see in those children um, uh, from a number, uh, clearly there's visible minorities within those classes, yeah. uh, those, those programs, but I have an immense sense of hope. <laughs> Uh, we have, uh, I always say this back to the question about natural resources. We were blessed here to have gas and oil and great grasslands for cattle and, and grains, etc. You know what it, what it was though, was we had some of the cream of the crop from the world who continue to come to our country yeah. and it was our education, our health care, and allowing individuals and groups to be all that they could be. And those are the things, it's that aspect uh, that, uh, and, and the diversity of our, of our nation and of our province is, uh, you can't, it's unparalleled in terms of strength. Um, it, it's, it's, and I, that's what gives me confidence and hope in the future. Thank you very much, I think, and that is part of the Canadian value. Uh, why most of the um, people around the globe uh, admire the Canadian people and Canadian as a nation because of what you mentioned. I guess I would describe it as the Canadian experience rather than go. the Canadian value okay. because uh, the experience was is that we begin to recognize that when we work together yeah. we can add so much more value together and uh, we can need to continue to find ways to create those opportunity. Uh, uh, someone once told me that luck is when preparation meets opportunity. There, that's true. <laughs> that is very and, true. And uh, education, healthcare, it's the preparation of our society. Things like natural resources, et cetera, and the people that are here, those are the opportunities. Uh, sometimes they usually say, you know, there is a, there is a threat and there is a perceived threat. Uh, uh, so if you don't know the individual, uh, that alone could be a threat of, of a not knowing the individual. And if you assume uh, the person is bad uh, based on what you read or what you seen from the TV, uh, I think then it's, it's a, I call ignorance. Look, the first thing is, is that um, um, that's one of the essence of democracy is the freedom to speak your mind. And yep. when, we, uh, when we, we must continue to sustain and allow that opportunity to happen because it's through dialogue that we begin to understand each other, seek yeah. to understand before being understood. Yeah. Um, and um, that that's, I think also it's very, you know, fear is probably the, uh, the major motivator for some of those thoughts. And I think it's very, very few people who are in that category of, of folks. Uh, when, when uh, you, uh, uh, when people are allowed to dialogue and create opportunity to exchange experiences uh, together, uh, that begins to erode. And also, I think the enemy amongst us sometimes is silence. Yeah. When, when we, those of us who appreciate and know and learn that strength, uh, the diversity is the strength, that we, we stand up, we, we find opportunities to bring people together to introduce them to each other. And almost always it becomes two and two equals five rather than equals four. I, 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 I like that, yeah, I think that is true. Uh, how do you think we can attract investors to Alberta in your own uh, opinion, sir? Uh, how we can diverse? How can we attract investors to Alberta? Well, my... Um, um, First of all, I have in my role as speaker, yep. uh, on behalf of the Legislative Assembly, I yep. receive um, uh, ambassadors, uh, counselors, uh, representatives of, of government, uh, pr uh, president uh, uh, pr uh, that, that come to the legislature. Yep. Yep. And invariably, one, always they talk about, we, we have a conversation like you and I are having, and invariably they will say 
we are interested in doing business with your country, with your province, because you have some of the best education, some of the brightest people in the world. You have systems in place that are long-term investments that are sustainable. And that right off the top we need to be conscious of. When we preserve and invest in those things, we will get payback multiple, for, uh, multiple times. Yeah investment that I think, and we're seeing it, and I believe we will see it, and this is the, the mantra that I will be saying. Mm -hmm. As we are on this long-term path of sustaining our current energy supply yeah. and helping to build, yeah. we have in this area of southern Alberta, we are the sunniest part of Canada. We have wind, which is very, very, very manageable. We have water. We have land. We have bright uh, entrepreneurs, people who are make to, to, to take some risks. And I really believe that uh, what well, this little island called the Gas City, that in southeastern Alberta, we, we can be energy central. Uh, we have so many opportunities. Those kinds of investments that I think, and by the way, agriculture is, is, is huge for us, continues to be huge for us. Uh, we, uh, we, we forget sometimes when we talk about oil and gas yep, that, yep. that agriculture is a major driver. The yep. world needs food, and yep. we have all kinds of opportunities for food processing. We have so many specialty crops, uh, the greenhouse industry that has is, is, uh, been one of our foundations for time and continues to grow. Uh, I, I think we just have huge opportunity. And we have the two largest beef processing in the world, uh, uh, JBS and Cargill. And we need to make sure that we can sell our beef without any burdens into U.S. and other markets. Yep, uh, we, yep. we hope that that doesn't uh, uh, become changed uh, by Mr. Trump and his, his, his government. With the uh, daily executive, uh, with his daily executive signing. <laughs> um, okay. The uh, Quebec shooting was committed by a lone wolf, uh, which was brainwashed through online. Uh, how do you think justice can be prevented such tra tragedy in the future? In I don't know, it was a tragic, so. Yeah, uh, it's, it's sad. Um, I, I watched the media coverage um, uh, where the premier of uh, Quebec spoke, and um, uh, I, I thought it was interesting that he said, uh, we are a great society. We are a caring, compassionate. Unfortunately, we still have some 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 uh, individuals yeah. uh, who have uh, burdens yeah. uh, that yeah. uh, are not times very rational. And yeah. um, I I think the way we do that is to continue to to, to talk freely and openly, uh, not to be silent. Uh, and, and to help and reach out to people that we see around us who are having some of those sense of loneliness and isolation that leads them to this. And I, and, uh, I think when you get, continue to keep that dialogue going, you may not always entirely eliminate it, but you will minimize it. And um, um, uh, I, relationships, relationships, yeah. relationships, that's what we need to be working on. Yeah, that's, that was unfortunate and tragic. And um, uh, as the premier of Quebec mentioned, I think was uh, something that could happen anywhere in the world. Um, could happen, you know, and um, we, we also need to be conscious as a society that we, that's why we need to have things like health care systems that are available and universally accessible. Um, uh, because so often uh, it is people who are having some mental, uh, emotional challenges yeah. that they can't cope with, and uh, they are sometimes not acting rationally. And, and we need to uh, create opportunities for those folks to access the services and care that they need rather than s put barriers in place. The, uh, what, what are the uh, wish list of the government in 2017? Uh, in terms of hope to achieve and for the for the Albertans to benefit, well, um, 
I have to answer that question in my capacity yep, as, as, as the speaker. Okay. The government has indicated, yep. uh, and I do draw the line that, that I'm not speaking for government, yep. but they've indicated in, 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 the, in the legislature. Uh, I think uh, clearly job creation, the pipelines uh, approval process, which are the two are very, very closely linked together. Yep. Um, and I think you also begin to see increased emphasis uh, through demonstration example, uh, focusing on um, uh, uh, good health and, and education services, focusing energy around women's participation in our democracy. Uh, and you're also, I think, going to see, uh, and already seen some signs of it, uh, a new relationship uh, with the First Nations people uh, uh, that uh, maybe in our past we may have dealt with better than than we have and uh, i i think those would be sort of and from what i see and hear the 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 the, the, the premier and the government and her, her cabinet speaking about those would probably be but job creation i think is because when people have the capacity to care for themselves and for their families then you you uh, you have a, a more productive society because it gets sh shared amongst all of us. It does. Uh, what will you, what message do you have for the Albertans in terms of hope, resilience, so better days are ahead of us as a speaker of the house, and the audience. It's all yours. Um, I uh, I think that that we've. We've been through a very difficult time. Uh, we've been there before. Uh, it's our resilience of our people, and when we help each other out, I'm also seeing, however, we looked at the job numbers, they continue to climb. We are seeing job fairs where people are being um, uh, recruiting for employees. You're already hearing that some of the employers who had laid off before are having difficulty getting pe finding people again. Uh, I think the cycle uh, um, has has changed and uh, and again I, I think we need to be looking out to the five and ten year window of opportunity I think renewable energy in this particular we are of a strategic advantage in this portion of the province uh, arguably uh, one of the best in Canada and uh, I, I I think there's so much more that we can uh, we can do here that uh, but it'll be our children and our um, uh, and and uh, the younger generations that will be the foundation of that. So better days are ahead of us. I believe they are. Okay. Now there you go. And uh, we could not agree more. I think better days are ahead of us and we hope 2017 will be the beginning of uh, those better days. Thank you very much, Mr. Honorable, coming to Global Village, and we'd love to have you next time. Until then, I guess we wish you very success uh, mission of your house speaker, and maybe... Come and see us, maybe. We will. We will take that, and we will come and see you. Thank you Thank very much, Thank you very much, much for having you. Thank you very much. Sir. This is uh, the Global Village. This is the end of the program, and we hope you will join us next time. Until then, we were very glad today to have our house speaker, Honorable Bob Warner.